Hi guys, welcome to Electric Car Australia, the YouTube channel for Aussies wanting to know a little bit more about electric cars or those thinking of going electric for their main ride. So today we wanted to do a quick video uh, going through the specifications of the MG ZS EV. Now these are the official specifications out of the owner's manual and it's interesting looking at this um, or this manual as some of them are slightly different to um, some of the stuff you find online so I don't know whether that's because it's the Australian models um, compared to the um, European models, Indonesian models etc. But anyway we'll do a quick page turn of the um, basic specifications of the um, car and I'll also um, put these up in some still shots shortly so you could do a screen grab of those. So overall as most of you would know the MG ZS EV is um, basically or is based on the petrol ZS models. Um, so they've just pulled the um, petrol engine out and put an electric in, um, an electric motor in and also the batteries obviously um, but most of the main dimensions etc are the same so it's a compact SUV the overall length of the vehicle is uh, 4314 millimeters or 4.3 meters the overall width is 1809 or just over 1.8 meters the overall height, now this is unladen height, so that means um, there's no weight in it, so this theoretically is the highest possible um, height of the vehicle, is um, 1620 or just over 1.6 metres. And the with the racks, um, that's 1644, so um, it has some, some racks on the top as well, so just a, very close to 1.65 um, metres in height. Wheelbase between centres is um, 2,585, so that's um, just over 2.5 metres. Front overhang over the front axle is 913, rear overhang is 816, and the front wheel track is 15 and 26, so that's distance between the front wheels. Distance between the rear wheels is 1539, so the rear wheels are slightly wider, so I guess gives it a little bit wider stance, might be better for um, um, composure on the road, handling. Minimum ground, ground clearance, now this is laden, so this will be up to the um, maximum weight of the vehicle, um, which just checking on that. So the gross vehicle mass is 1966, so that's basically the maximum the vehicle can be loaded. Um, so the ground clearance laden is 125 millimetres. Um, so that's not bad for a vehicle with um, a 44 kilowatt hour battery underneath, so um, keep in mind the battery is um, sitting up underneath. And we'll do a video um, separately one day looking up under the chassis and the undercarriage of the vehicle so you'll get to see, see that. So on that note, if you're not a subscriber of the channel, please subscribe. Um, the more subscribers we get, that helps our YouTube uh, views, that helps get us out there um, and more people see us. So please hit the subscribe button and also like the videos or share them with your friends as well if you find them useful. So back to the specs, the minimum turning diameter is 11.2 metres. All the others were um, millimetres. So it's a five seater. As we mentioned before in one of our other videos, there's retractable seat belts for five um, people. So that's good. Um, the unladen vehicle weight curbside is 1532 kilos, so just over 1.5 tonnes. Gross vehicle weight is 1966 kilos so just under two tons and if you subtract the unladen weight from the gross vehicle mass that'll give you the carrying capacity of the vehicle um, so this is actually not a lot um, works out at about 430 kilos that you can load into the vehicle now that is common for all these sort of um, small SUV type type vehicles because being an SUV the chassis and frames are actually heavier than a sedan or a hatchback so there's more weight there. Um, obviously the batteries are a couple of hundred kilos heavier so you could subtract that off 
So um, a petrol version, you could carry a couple of hundred kilos more. Um, but just be aware of that, that it is small. Um, so you've got 430 kilos to play with. So that doesn't allow you to load up much gear. Um, and hence, that's why these guys aren't rated for um, towing. Whereas I believe the petrol ones are rated for a 500 uh, kilo towing hitch. Um, moving on, the unladen front axle weight is 892 kilos. The unladen rear axle weight is 640. Um, so that means the front of the car is obviously heavier. It's got the, the motor, etc., uh, electric motor up the front. Um, so if the vehicle's unladen, it could be a little bit light in the rear end. We haven't found that, um, but just be aware that you are a couple of hundred kilos lighter in the back end. However, once you load the vehicle up, um, so your gross front axle then is 993 and your gross rear axle is 973. So these numbers don't mean a lot to most people, but it just gives you a little bit of an idea that you've got about 430 kilos that you can load into the car, and that includes people. Um, and just be aware that the front of the car with no, no one in it, no weight, is heavier than the rear, which again is quite common in um, these, although you do have normally a fuel tank in the back that helps to um, put a little bit more weight in the back, which you don't have in, in an EV. So that's the technical specs of sort of the chassis. So um, most of that is quite similar to the petrol one. But now we get into the exciting stuff. So the parameters are the high voltage battery. So this is your traction battery, um, your big sucker that's underneath that costs all the money, um, generally about 50% of the cost of an EV. So it's a ternary, that's a new one, ternary lithium, lithium iron battery. Um, the rated energy is 44.5 kilowatt hours. The rated voltage is 394.2 volts. That's quite standard for um, EVs. The higher the voltage, uh, generally the better. Um, the Porsche, I think the, the latest Porsche Taycan electric that's out is um, in excess of 800 volts. Um, so there's numerous different reasons why higher voltage is better, um, but it's also more expensive. But the little MG, it's got 394. Um, just in driving, I notice um, quite often, and, and charging, it's, it's above 400, so 420, etc. So heat, um, the temperature of the battery has a, an impact on that. So you will notice it'll fluctuate. But I'm assuming this uh, rated voltage is at rest, maybe 80% capacity, etc. The weight of the battery is 283 kilos. So that's Interesting for a nerd like me um, to know that you've got just under 300 kilos is, is the weight of that, um, that battery. And the waterproof grade is IP67. So that basically means it's dust, sand type proof. Um, so no dust and sand can get in there. And generally IP67 rating means that it has been tested or is capable of being submersed to one metre of water for up to 30 minutes. Basically, you could put the, um, the battery in this car underwater and you've got no problems. Um, so again, that's an interesting thing to know because some people are a bit freaked out about electric cars. Obviously, water and electricity don't mix. If you're going through causeways that have got water running over them, etc., you can be rest assured you've got no issues. So onto the traction motor. So this is the um, the big big boy that actually gets us moving, um, or in this particular car, they're not that big. Um, but it's a three-phase permanent magnet synchronous motor. Um, the rated power is 68 kilowatts, and the peak power is 105 kilowatts. Um, the rated torque is 130 kilowatts and the peak torque is 353 and we'll compare these with the petrol one shortly. Um, rated speed of the, um, so this is the RPM of the electric motor is 5,000 revs and the maximum speed is 10,000 revs, so quite high. Um, the winding type is a wave winding. And the waterproof grade, again, of the engine is dustproof, sandproof, and also waterproof um, between 15 centimetres and a metre for 30 minutes duration. 
So basically on your waterproofing, um, your electric motor and your batteries, no problems at all. Um, I would be a little careful though, having looked up under the MG, um, lots of wiring, etc. in there. Um, everything looks reasonably well sealed, um, but I would say if you were um, quite regularly going through deep creeks or causeway crossings, your problems would be more in the cable connections, etc., up under the, the bonnet um, rather than your battery and your motor. Um, so common sense prevails in that space. So let's do a comparison against the um, petrol uh, MG ZS and the ZS EV. And I apologise for the light. It was 35 degrees today here in Brisbane, so I resisted actually doing too much in the middle of the day. Um, coming out in the um, late afternoon, much more comfortable, but unfortunately the light is disappearing quickly. So hopefully you guys can still see it okay. So we'll do this one in reverse order. We'll start with the power again. So if we look at the peak power of the EV, which was 105 kilowatts, and we compare that to the 1.5 litre petrol, which is the bigger four cylinder engine, um, the max power with that one is 84 kilowatts. So we've got 84 for the petrol, 105 for the EV. So the EV is um, a reasonable amount more there in peak power. Um, obviously you don't always drive at peak power, but that's the, the power you've got available to you. Now the exciting part of electric cars is the torque. Um, so basically you've got instant torque from um, zero. So obviously petrol motors or internal combustion engine motors, you need to build up um, to the power and the torque, but these ones off the mark, and that's one of the most exciting things about electric cars is the acceleration. Um, so they really do invigorate the driving style, so to speak. So the max torque of the 1.5 litre petrol is 150 newton metres at 4,500 revs. Peak torque of the ZSEV is 353. So that's 353 for the EV and 150 for the petrol. So that just goes to show you've got over double the torque available. Um, now that's peak torque, so if you put your foot flat to the floor, um, the EV shows here a rated um, torque of 130 newton metres and unfortunately the specifications online for the petrol don't give us that. So that's more um, your rated normal everyday drive all day at that um, and deliver that torque. Um, but unfortunately we can't compare that with, with the petrol. Um, the other interesting one of note comparing the petrol is the weight. So the tear mass, and it's interesting that um, between these they don't call things the same thing. So the tear mass online for the petrol is the same as the unladen mass um, for the in the EV manual. So the unladen vehicle mass is 15.32 for the EV and for the petrol it's 12.55. So uh, what's that, 12, 34. So we've got about 300 kilos, oh sorry, yeah, 300 kilos and sorry we've just got a big diesel ice start up and shine the headlights in my eyes. So. So yeah, just comparing the unladen vehicle weight of the EV is 1532 against the tear mass of the four cylinder petrol motor, the 1.5 litre is 1255. So roughly 300 kilos um, heavier the um, electric. And if we go back to the weight of the battery, um, that's pretty much the weight of the battery. So 283. Um, so yeah, that that equates to it. So you take your fuel tank and all those other bits and pieces, your gearbox, transmission, all that out of the petrol one, um, the EV is still heavier when you load in that, that um, battery bank. So look, I think that's about it. Subscribe so you're aware of our um, other new videos coming up and we'll do one showing the undercarriage so it'll um, show that. But look, yeah, that's it. So the MG ZS EV owner's handbook um, specifications, which this is actually not, not a bad little handbook. Um, 
it's the translation's quite good um, from Chinese, so there's nothing in there that sort of sounds weird and wonderful, and it is actually quite detailed. We'll be doing lots of other videos on things like MG Pilot, um, all the other um, safety features, and the whiz bang um, little doodads that are in the car. Um, we'll be running through those as well in future videos. So look, if you have been, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. And um, as I mentioned before, please share with your friends, like the videos and also subscribe. Take care.